Kelly, Kelly Plans It All. Welcome back to my channel. This week, I want to talk about theater etiquette, I guess. Um, it, I just kind of came up with a list of like things that you should probably avoid to be respectful to other theater patrons, to the actors, and to just present yourself well in society. And I know theater etiquette is kind of a debatable thing right now in the theater community because people worry so much about like elitism and access and those are totally valid arguments. Um, so I'm going to use that lens to focus some of these etiquette tips um, just to, to make sure that you're um, not annoying other people. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but then, you know, there are other elements as well. So the first thing, and it's a really big point of contention right now, is theater dress. So traditionally, a Sunday best kind of attire um, was the standard, um, being dressed up for theater. Um, but as time has evolved, like even churches don't require Sunday best anymore. So that idea of being church appropriate for theater or even dressier in some cases um, has eroded. But I do think it's important to be dressed to some standard for the theater. Now, me personally, my Southern grandmother would probably beat me, literally, uh, if I showed up with anything less than a skirt on. That's my personal standard of dress. I'm not going to hold anyone else to that. If you are comfortable in slacks or, oh good, someone's car alarm's going off. Cool. Uh, if you're comfortable in anything less dressy, if you're comfortable in slacks, if you have nice jeans, I think that's perfectly fine. I would say the don'ts for the theater is dirty clothes. Like I've seen people show up like they've been working on the farm all day with mud on their boots and ripped jeans and sleeveless shirts and a dirty sweaty ball cap. That's completely inappropriate. Plus you probably stink and you have to sit next to a bunch of people. So like at a minimum wear clean clothes, shower and put on deodorant. And I think you're gonna be good. That's like minimum dress. Um, I know especially with Broadway shows, a lot of people are doing touristy things during the day. And then depending on where your hotel is, if you're not staying in Midtown, you might have, you not have time to go back to your theater or to your hotel and, and get dressed for theater. That's totally fine. You can go in your jeans and your t-shirt, but like if you wore deodorant that day and showered, you're going to be good. Otherwise you might be a little offensive to the people around you. So that's, that's it. Just like you can be dressed up if you're like me and that's how you get excited about theater, being dressed well for theater, absolutely. Now, if it's an event that's like a gala or an opening night, that is ritzy. You should be like cocktail attire for those. Um, but everything else, you know, dress, dress comfortably while still looking like you care. I mean, you don't, like I said, nice jeans. There are very expensive jeans out there. If you spent $200 on a pair of very nice jeans, wear them to the theater. They are not going to be gross and dirty, but don't wear the jeans you haven't washed in a week and have worn every day and sweated in. Like that's the difference. So like, just care a little. The next thing that you should do is arrive early. And this is something that like, I arrive early everywhere I go pretty much. I'm rarely the late person. Um, but you really do have to be early. It's terribly rude for you to walk in after the show has already started, block people's view, uh, step on people, you know, like, it, and it's, it's always people who have like the middle of a long row. They're never on the aisle. Um, that's just the way it is. So you have to prepare. Um, there's going to be traffic. There's always traffic. I know in Dallas for us to get from where we live to where our touring venue is, it's 40 minutes if there's no traffic, <laughs> but we have Friday night subscription tickets. So that means we are in rush hour traffic in the evening. And so, I mean, like it can take an hour to go 10 miles sometimes. You just really don't know. So we always leave exceptionally early 
and then we kind of adjust our dinner plan based on are we making good time or not. So you just have to be mindful of traffic, of um, the things that you want to do when you get to the theater. Are you planning on buying a bar drink? Are you planning on buying merchandise? Do you need to go to the restroom and the restroom's all the way in the basement? Is there going to be a line? there will be a line. Um, so you just have to prepare for those things. Um, I know we've had issues at our local theater venue sometimes where the mobile tickets don't work and they have to send everyone who has mobile tickets to the box office to get printed tickets because the mobile entry is not working or the Wi-Fi is not working and no one can access their tickets. Weird stuff happens and so you really just you have to leave a cushion so that you can be in your seat ready for the show to begin at curtain time. That's you just gotta be early. Um, I know when I saw Mean Girls on Broadway, and I'm gonna address this situation multiple times, there was a family behind us who came in like three songs in, and they cli literally climbed all over me. Like their little boy sat on my shoulders and used my hand as a, a handrail, my head as a handrail. Like they were really disturbing coming in late. Not everyone is that bad, but some people are and they just, they don't realize it. So just don't be that person. That's my thing. Just be early. Um, the next thing I want to address is your electronic devices. And I know we're really used to hearing that in movie theaters. Um, but I think there's a new generation of theater goers and they're used to going to concerts and being able to have their phone out and text during the whole concert or Instagram or Snapchat. You, you can't do that in theater. You have to turn your phone off. There are people who can see you on the stage that like the glow lights up your whole face it's very distracting to them um the noise of ringing and text tones and all of that is very distracting um even your apple watch or any other wearables that you may have like that rise to lift to to wake function when you're clapping this thing lights up so there is a theater mode on here if you swipe up see that little theater mask tap that and that turns off that rise to wake function. And so you raise your arm again, and it'll only light up if I tap on it. So if you did in an emergency need to read something, you could, but it doesn't light up when I rise it anymore. And it's the same to turn it off. You wake up your face and go turn it off. Really easy. So make sure you put your, your wearables in theater mode. Make sure that you turn your phone off off is preferable if you you know know that there's an emergency situation pending and you want to put it on silent that's fine um but don't illuminate the phone to check it leave the hall go outside the theater and check it do not sit there and illuminate your whole face to check text messages i've seen people scroll facebook during hamilton hamilton are you kidding me what are you doing you didn't pay nothing for this seat why are you during Hamilton? I, I, I told the lady, um, it was when me and my mom went here in Dallas and she, her husband left randomly, like halfway through the first act. And she's just over there on her phone and she was on the phone before he left, but I couldn't see her because his body was blocking the illumination. Um, and so once he left, I was like, can you put that away? It's really distracting. Like I just had to tell her, um, people just, treat it like they're at home and they're not. So it's really disrespectful to people around you. It's really distracting. It catches my eye and then I'm not watching the show. Um, and you know, if you, if you need, if you have a real emergency and you need to be on your phone, get up and go. That's less distracting than you sitting there texting back and forth about whatever impending emergency is happening. You're, you're not paying attention to the show anyway. So go ahead and, and go out in the hallway and figure out if you need to stay or go, but don't take everybody with you. So turn it off, put it away. Along with that and being courteous to your fellow theater goers, if you are eating candy or you have cough drops, and if you need cough drops, by all means, please bring them. But it would be nice if you would unwrap those things prior. So I know I've gone to the theater with a, a cough and needed cough drops. And so I've unwrapped a few and put them in a little compartment of my purse where I know I can kind of silently reach in and grab them as I need them. Those crinkly wrappers, it's terrible. It's like you, and it's like people only unwrap them during the slow ballad where you can hear every crinkle of the paper and trying to do it slower 
just draws it out and makes it worse, you know? So if you can unwrap your stuff ahead of time, I know for my, my son always buys candy when we go see a show and I just don't let him eat it during the show because it's noisy. So he knows he can eat some before the show starts and at intermission he can eat some more, but that we don't eat during the show. Back to those rude people at Mean Girls. So not only were they late and like physically disruptive when they were late, they brought their food leftovers from dinner. I don't know how they did that because they check your stuff when you come in and they're not supposed to let you bring leftovers in, but they let them bring their dinner leftovers in. And during act two, they start opening their containers and eat, and I could smell it. I, I don't know what it was. It was like, I could smell French fries and other like kind of like fried bar food kind of stuff. I don't know what they had back there, but it was crazy, crazy. Don't do that. Do not eat. Eat before, eat after. You don't need to eat during the show. Okay, so next point. Don't talk or sing along. I know it's really tempting not to sing along to your favorite show, but again, it's not a concert. It's not okay to talk to your neighbor. It's not okay to sing along to the show. Um, this is really hard. I feel like this is the hardest when there's like a a musical that's filled with popular music songs. Um, I know we saw um, the Gloria Estefan. Um, I can't think of what it's called. It's escaping me. The musical about Gloria Estefan. Um, I'm not going to get it. It's, it'll come to me in like 10 minutes. Um, but because that is such popular music that everyone knows, the people behind us were like having a full on jam session. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I had to give them a teacher look. Um, I didn't pay to hear them sing. I paid to hear the people on stage sing. Um, it's not a concert, not a concert. It is a live performance, but not a concert. So you can't sing along. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Sometimes there are musicals that will break the fourth wall and engage the audience and ask them to sing along at certain points. Um, Hamilton does this in two specific places. And I see people debate this online as whether or not they're asking or if they're trying to include the ensemble on the stage to sing along. Lin-Manuel Miranda himself on the Hamill cast when he was a guest clarified that it is perfectly acceptable to sing along both when the king says everybody and um, in my shot when John Lawrence says everybody sing. So in both of those places, it's perfectly appropriate to sing along. In fact, I've seen some kings encourage to sing along to such a degree that they will cut you off when the audience is supposed to stop and drop out. So it's definitely not only allowable, but expected to sing along if you were invited to do so. And I would imagine there are probably some other shows that have that element. Um, Hamilton's just the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, so definitely no singing along unless you're invited to do so. And then the talking, like, first of all, if you're putting your head together with someone else to talk to them, you're blocking the view of someone behind you. That's a problem. Um, when we were at Book of Mormon here in Dallas, there was a couple in front of us. You could tell that the husband was hard of hearing and the wife was repeating every line that was said into his ear, which is very sweet but they make assisted listening devices so that that doesn't have to happen because it was a huge distraction. Now I did not interfere because I felt like I didn't want to offend them, but I also felt like maybe theaters in general don't do a great enough job of advertising that those services are available for people. So if you didn't know that and you do go with someone who has trouble with hearing go and ask guest services. They probably have assisted listening devices available so that you don't have to relay the whole show to the other person in your party. Uh, I just felt really bad for him because it was a funny show and he, he, you know, for an older gentleman, I figured would be totally offended by Book of Mormon. You know, he was laughing, but he was late at every joke. And then we were having a hard time hearing the next joke because the wife was relaying it. So uh, there, there is help for that. You don't have to have someone whisper. And then if you're just chit-chatting, stop it. Just stop it. It's not appropriate. Like y'all can talk after the show about the show, but you don't need to talk during the show. If you have something that important to say, again, take it to the hallway. We don't need to hear it. So I talked a little bit about phones 
Um, but while the show's going on, no photography, no filming, absolutely none of that. It is a copyright issue. So all of the music, all of the sets, all of the costumes, it's all protected by copyright. You are not allowed to film and photograph it. Like again, it's not a concert. And even some concerts now, my husband just went to the Tool concert and they were not allowed to film, not allowed to take pictures. They at the end had one song and they were allowed to. But other than that, like they be in the moment. You paid to be there. Be a part of it. And and certainly don't contribute to the the bootleg phenomenon. It's not a good way to watch theater. It does not solve the problem of accessibility to theater. Um, you're never going to get the feeling from a bootleg that you're going to get from live theater. And there are issues with accessibility to theater. And we can work on those as a community. But bootlegging's not the answer. Uh, and some shows do better than others at providing accessibility options like lotteries and rush tickets and standing room and things like that um, and inviting community and students in to see shows at a uh, reduced rate. Like, it, like I said, some shows and some venues do a better job of that than others and we can encourage the others to continue those programs but and to go further, but bootlegging is not the answer. Don't contribute to the problem of intellectual property theft because that's what it is. Um, it's not sticking it to the man, like it's theft. Um, and the man are the heroes that you see on stage, the people who work to create these roles. That's who you're sticking it to. You're not sticking it to the producers. They're like making so much money. It doesn't matter. You're sticking it to the, the people who are doing the work. So stop it. Um, next thing, when the show ends and bows are occurring this is not your chance to sneak out early to beat the parking lot traffic again there are live people on the stage they can see you leaving it's super rude this is your opportunity to appreciate the work that they've done uh, you know you don't have to be over enthusiastic and, and give a standing ovation unless you were really feeling it um but you should clap and you should remain at your seat it's not run for the parking lot um, it's just rude. It's rude. Um, now after the show, if you do choose to go to the stage door, if it's a venue where stage dooring is a thing to meet the cast, there are some expectations at the stage door as well. The first rule is like, be a polite human. Like don't push and shove people out of the way. Um, let the little kids get up to the front, make room for people. Be helpful if it's a really deep stage door. Be helpful and pass playbills up to get signed. Um, just be a human. Now, when you are interacting with cast members, there are some things here. First and foremost, you're there to thank them. So if you can't think of anything else useful to say, just say, I really enjoyed the performance. Thank you so much. That's a minimum. Um, just thank them. They, they just did a big job and they didn't have to come out, but they chose to come out. They wanted to interact with fans. So be polite to them as well. Um, one other thing I would like to talk about in this area. Um, I see this on Twitter a lot because people get their feelings hurt who are in shows. There are people who go to stage doors and they're getting the principal cast members to sign their playbill. And then an ensemble member comes and they yank their playbill away and they don't let them sign. What is wrong with you? Honestly, what's wrong with you? Everybody just worked really, really hard on this show. If you're there for one signature, you were there for all signatures. Um, you know, if you want to, if there's someone specific you want and they're the first person out, you get them signed and you go ahead and leave, fine. But you don't stand there and refuse to interact with people who just worked for you. That is terribly rude. They are a human you're not just like saying no, you're not swiping left and right on the internet. They are there in front of you. Don't do that. Let them sign your freaking playbill. You never know who they're gonna be 10 years from now. You think you didn't want their autograph? I just, I can't with that mentality. They just, they just did a whole show for you. And the ensemble works so hard. The swings work so hard. The understudies work so hard. Let them sign your freaking playbill. It's rude. Don't do it. Okay, off of that soapbox and on to the next piece. 
after the show, if the actor you were expecting to be on was not on, do not at them on Twitter and Instagram and chastise them for not being there. They had a reason to not be there. They were sick. Their kid was sick. They had a scheduled vacation. You didn't buy a ticket to see them. You bought a ticket to a show. And if you can't get past that, don't buy a ticket to the show. That's just the way it is. Similarly, if the actor you wanted to see was on, but they couldn't come out to the stage door for whatever reason, do not at them. Don't do it. They had a reason for not coming out. They're tired. They're sick. They don't want to. They have somewhere to be after that. They have family visiting them backstage. Whatever. They don't owe it to you. You bought a ticket to a show. You did not buy a meet and greet ticket with everyone in the show. That's the way it is. I've been to shows where I hoped someone would come out. And sometimes they did. It was great. And sometimes they did it. And that was okay too. And so in that case, if it was someone I really wanted to meet and I didn't get a chance, I usually will text that, not text them. <laughs> I wish I could text them. No, I might, you know, next time I see them go by, I saw the show on Saturday. You were fantastic. Thank you so much for a great performance. That you can do. You can still thank them on Twitter, on Instagram, on whatever. But do not ask them where they were or say, I missed you at the stage door. Like some passive aggressive, where were you thing. Don't do it. They don't owe it to you. But you can absolutely say, I really enjoyed your performance. Thank you so much. I hope I get to see you again someday. That's totally acceptable. So those are kind of my, my big standouts. There may be some that I missed. Uh, but those are, I guess, my theater pet peeves. Um, tell me in the comments, what bugs you about other people's behavior at theater? What do you feel like are points of etiquette that I missed? Or maybe you feel like I got wrong. Like I said, um, accessibility being what it is. And, um, you know, there's always been this like old air of elitism in theater. We certainly don't want to keep people from being accessible to theater, but there are standards of behavior for live performance that we've got to teach these younger generations who don't know or people who are just new to theater regardless of age um, so that we can all have an enjoyable time and continue to have these stage door interactions with theater people because it's not something you get, you know, you don't go to a movie and get to go outside and everyone in the movie's there to sign your movie ticket. Like that's not a thing. Hollywood is not that accessible. Theater people have always been so generous with their time um, because they know largely that their success depends on fans. And so they they have been generous and we want them to continue to be generous and not be um, scared or frustrated with the fan base. Um, so like be a human, treat people how you want to be treated and show up ready to be in a live performance and everyone will have a great time. So those are my thoughts. You can share yours in the comments or you can... Find me at Kelly Plans It All on Instagram or Twitter and tell me what you think. And, you know, hit that subscribe button. We'll be talking about planners and travel and theater all the time. So you don't want to miss what's next.